Portuguese bars to light, uh, to life rather tonight. But a chance now for Scotland. Just about uh, eight or nine metres out from Portugal's line. Portugal not even attacking that. They're just going into defence. What a great little shove there. But unfortunately, they've just pushed uh, Scotland further into the midfield where they've got options on both sides now. Deciding to keep it tight. But look at that. That is a wasted opportunity again Excuse for Scotland. Me, Nine, if you want it well, they were just a little bit of a hurry that, that time, Scotland. It's a great defensive down, drive from Portugal. Instruction, yes, I know. And Scotland just got in a little bit, of a, little bit of a hurry. Well, they should be back to full strength quite soon. The yellow card uh, will disappear off the top left-hand corner of the screen off that caption when the sin bin is empty of the Portuguese player. I don't know who it was now. Was it uh, Uva? Yes, it was. The back yeah. row forward? Yes, yeah. it was. Well, Uva. And, uh, take them down and watch they're just ahead when they set up that second driving more. Ewan Murray digs into the ball. I think it's Nathan Hines who's uh, preventing the defenders from getting at them. So a good decision by Mr. Walsh. Come on and stop. Thank you. Joaquim Ferreira had success last time with his throw, and that was a brilliant take there by Gonchala Uva. Obstruction there from Scotland. No, he's not straight on. Oh, no. <clears throat> There's a clear indicator he was reaching with an outside hand. Crouch, touch, pause, engage. Scotland with the put in. Good control by the Scottish forwards there. Lamont in the line once again. Uploaded to his brother but made a mess of it. And uh, the outside half to Ate Pinto. Puts it into touch and there is Carl Uva urging himself, urging the linesman to tell the referee he wants to come back on because his uh, spell in the sin bin is over. So Portugal back to full strength. Just uh, getting a shake of the hands there from his captain. And that was contested, but palmed down by Scott Murray. A little bit scrappy at the start of the second half, isn't it? Well, it is. Anyway. Scotland will be disappointed they haven't capitalised by scoring any points whilst Port Portugal reduced to 14 men. And just as you say, a little bit scrappy there. But, uh, you know, you have to admire the uh, tenacity of this Portuguese side. Touch! And certainly haven't been overawed by the occasion. And all the opposition. This talk. Stop. He's having a word with Rui Cordero once more. It's the man in red on this side of the scrummage. It's uh, propped forward. With a little bit of a scrappy pick up there by Vasa Uva. Oh, he made a real mess of that. Three. Well, you can see Rui Cordero's uh, really trying to sort of almost scrummage under Ewan Murray's armpit, which makes it very difficult for Murray to actually get a grip. So Walsh coming across to this side again. His head's right outside yeah, there. That's uh, Steve Walsh actually just uh, showing stay binding, uh, stay bound on, whether it was to the prop forward or to the one on the wing forwards, I'm not sure. But anyway, Scotland have possession. Diving back inside is Taylor. The wall being stolen by Portugal. They've done that a couple of times. That was good. The number seven who just come back on, Uva. Just uh, shoulder charging his opposite number from the Scottish pack. Is the substitute, Miguel Fontella. So Portugal have a bit of quality possession now. Looking for options. They send it wide. That's the winger. Pedro Cavallo, the man who thought he'd scored a try a few moments ago. Oh, that was a bit lucky. And the ball goes bouncing off two or three players, eventually into the arms of the captain. This is about the longest passage of play that uh, Portugal have had during the whole game. Now, can they recycle it once more? Vasa Uva says yes. Trying to dart inside, goes the fullback, Pedro Leal. Leal, the fullback, is such a tricky little player, but uh, he had a couple of real touches of the ball during the whole match. 
in terms of attacking opportunities. A bit of a wrestling match going on there. The crowd shouting for Portugal. That was a good charge down there by Rob Dewey. Advantage to Portugal, though, for the time being. There's the skipper, Uva. Took it on a metre and got shoved back two metres. Knocked on, though. Scum down. Now, Nathan Hines was uh, throwing a few handbags 13. on Sam. the touchline. Uh, number six. It's a shoulder down there. Paul, uh, Scotland uh, getting ready to make a change here. Hugo Southwell is ready to come on. Marcus Di Rollo is the man set to make okay. way. Thanks very much indeed. I think uh, that was possibly a substitution that we were expecting, wasn't it? Yeah, well, it'll be interesting to see whether Southwell goes to the outside centre or Simon Webster comes into outside centre and then um, they have a bit of a cabinet reshuffle, put Rory Lamont to, uh, on the wing and Southwell at fullback, which is his normal position. I'd like to see Southwell go in at uh, outside centre, I have to say. So the substitute is on, Hugo Southwell, for his 31st cap in the Scottish jersey. Just another slight hold up there. And it uh, looks as though the hooker is going off. That is uh, Joaquim Pereira and Colvia coming on for Portugal. So fresh legs in the scrum. Appreciating the support that he's had from this crowd here. A little bit of uh, concern on the face there of Comanche Moraes. The big applause for his players. So another substitute uh, on and off. There's one of them on this side, Paolo Murinello, wearing number 18. Straight through goes Pedro Leal with a little uh, grubber kick. That's returned with interest by Scotland. I think it's going to go into the dead ball area. Now, what will Portugal do from here? Touch it down, off to the 22. No uh, risks being taken there. Well, certainly a bit of the fizz has gone out of this game. We're uh, 11 minutes into the second half, and the fizz has gone out of this game. We're uh, 11 minutes into the second half, and Frank Haddon looking pretty cool, calm and collected. Well, I think he probably knows the game from the back, but there's a lot of work to do. But uh, nevertheless, Vasu Uva on the foul, Uva. The Pinto is uh, popped over the top of the Scottish defence, and it goes out into touch. I think Jason White just needs to get a hold of his guys and uh, rev them up a wee bit. Uh, Hugo Southall trying to take it uh, very quickly to Lamont. So coming up to the 53 minute mark, it's still Scotland 28, Portugal 10. No score in this second half so far. And certainly in the second half, the Portuguese pack has been holding their own. In fact, more than holding their own against the Scottish forwards. And in the middle of the pack there for Scotland, Simon Taylor. The scrum half just having to drop onto the ball there with Jose Pinto. Now, can they recite it? The ball is at uh, the back of that ruck. Picked up there by Samosa. The penalty now to Portugal. Offside. And Charla Uva with the ball in his hands there. Gives it to his outside half, Duarte Pinto. It's just where your man is. Thank you. Play. I'm trying to rev up the Scottish team as the pipe band. But that will be the throw in to Scotland just inside their own 22. Well, I think it's Alistair Hogg there. You can see the offside line is the back foot, and he's probably a foot or so ahead of that. Well, well, there you go, a bit of success for Portugal at the line. 
And if they can stay on their feet here, they might have a chance of uh, pushing Scotland back, but it goes to ground. And suddenly Jose Pinto, the scrum half, desperate to get his hands on that ball. It looks as though Portugal will keep it tight again. They roll towards that far touch line. Good driving run there by Uva. And you've got the weight there of uh, Cadera behind you. That's going to create a few metres for Portugal. Now they spin it away. Oh, that was about the only mistake that Pinto has made in the whole game. You see the frustration written out on uh, the face of the outside half. Uh, took just, his eye off the just ball. Just took his eye off the ball, and I think Alistair Hogg would be a little bit frustrated that he didn't pick it up. Because there was no one home behind him. And Scotland really need to assert themselves again. Very controlled in the first 20, 30 minutes, but they've gone off the boil in this middle part of the game. They did the same against Ireland in the, uh, the warm-up game. The Portuguese prop there just keeps slipping his binding all the time, and I just wonder when Steve Walsh is going to have a word with him. However, that's not for us to uh, contemplate. Portugal still in possession. Diogo Mateus. And now Scotland has stolen it. Comes out to this near side. A little pop over the top there by Sean Lamont, who goes racing on. It's a foot race now and a chance. Oh, my goodness. That was almost a pick-up by Rob Dewey. But Scotland the get the penalty. To your feet. And that just shows you what Scotland are capable of when they get quality possession. The kick across field now, not to the hooker, but this time to Rob Dewey. Just a metre short, but there's no support there. There's the hooker. Has a look up. Passes it on to Lamont. Lamont stays on his feet, spins around. Now needs the force to drive him over. Pick up there by Nathan Hines. Here goes Scotland, Taylor. That is a try, a simple try for Dan Park. Well worked in the end, but boy, it was a long time coming. Well, it has been a long time coming, but uh, again, made by Sean Lamont run up the uh, near side touchline and uh, forcing Portugal to concede that penalty, which was taken quickly. And then good recycling. Lovely offload there by Simon Webster to Dan Parks. And you just wonder whether this is a sort of stimulus for, for Scotland to cut loose now. Well, we certainly have seen that. When you get a, a big nation, a big rugby-playing nation, playing against... Please don't take this the wrong way if you're Portuguese and listening. Uh, against one of the rugby-playing minnows, you know, they can put up a fight for so long, but then the... The huge physical advantage that Scotland obviously have over Portugal can take its toll. So we shall have to wait and see. But uh, Dan Parks, obviously the top scorer for Scotland in their World Cup campaign so far, adds another two points. He really has got his kicking boots on here. So Scotland leading by 35 points to 10. So seven points to the outside half, Dan Parks in that last play. Good try, followed by the conversion. Just wonder how much uh, lift or fillip that uh, Portugal can give themselves now. It looks as though uh, Chris Patterson is coming on, Matt. Can you see any activity yeah. down on the touchline? That's right, Chris Patterson is on, and the man who has scored the most points today is making way to a good ovation behind me, Dan Parks being replaced. Well, Chris Patterson, one of the top point scorers of all time, of course, in a Scottish jersey. Will be a, a welcome addition to the Scotland team, I am sure. But certainly, Dan Parks is quite It was that man, Pedro Cavallo, there. He's been a, a useful player for Portugal. Just took his eye off the ball there, so Scotland on the counter-attack. He's getting a little bit isolated there, was um, Jason White. Playing advantage, but... Uh, here, please. 22. Penalty to Scotland. Well, again, Portugal getting their hands in the ruck, and it's 
very frustrating for Mike Blair, that, just slowing the ball down. Having said that, I think Scotland have, uh, have got to be a little bit more aggressive in the contact areas. They were bullied a wee bit by uh, South Africa in the, in the warm-up international, and they're just not quite dominating that phase of play.